I'll have a paper that's supposed to be due, and I'll be well aware of it, maybe a month beforehand, and I will wait into the night before, probably around 10 o'clock at night to start writing it. Um, the excuse is I work hard under pressure, and I really just, I, I can't concentrate until I know that it's due the next day. Paper that I could have every source of information on will take me anywhere from four to five hours to write just because of all the distractions that there are. I'll be going from website to website and talking to people, watching television, and then I'll decide to write my paper. I feel like I get writer's block not because I can't have, not because I don't have the idea in my head, I just feel like I have too many things to distract me. I'll go on to the next sentence that I'm about to write, but something will be on TV or I'll jump onto a website and it'll distract me totally and I'll feel like I don't, I, I'll feel like it's writer's block, but it's really just me being distracted by something else. Okay. I, I struggle often. It, I also do a lot of self-editing, so the, the block is internal. I mean, all writer's block is internal, but for me specifically, if I don't like the idea, I'll start over completely from the beginning. So, yeah, I do struggle with it. The way I work, it could be with a partner, you know, like a collaborative effort, or it could be by myself. But if I'm working by myself, I need no distractions. So to me, that means putting on some headphones, listening to some music while I write. And it's usually music without any words because I find the words to be distracting. I, I, I like lyrics. So listening to the words is a huge distraction. It would probably influence the writing that I'm doing. But if I'm doing a collaborative project, then we bounce ideas back and forth and then I uh, take those ideas and then go through my individual process and then come back with more ideas. So that's kind of the way I work with, uh, with both individual and collaborative writing. Another update coming up at 8.22. Living with attention deficit disorder is a challenge all by itself, but as a high school student, those challenges are greater in college as well. Attending or just thinking about college can certainly be overwhelming for someone with ADD. So how can you succeed in college? Michael Sandler, author of College Confidence with ADD, joins us live in studio this morning with some advice. Michael, good morning. Good morning. Just give us your experience first. When did you realize that you had ADD? Uh, well, I was diagnosed with it twice. First First um, and second grade, after my first parent-teacher conference, my mom was told that I was the worst student teachers had ever had in 32 years of teaching. Wow. Then I was re-diagnosed with it um, going back to uh, college when I found that I couldn't juggle all of these competing demands at the same time. I was having meltdowns during quizzes and tests. My group project partners wanted to lynch me as well. For people who might not know and have never had that diagnosis, mm -hmm. what are some of the early signs? What, in second grade, very different from what you experienced likely in high school. Yeah, in second grade, the biggest signs were uh, boredom, distractibility, inability to pay attention in class, uh, talking out of turn, uh, impulsivity control, and bouncing off of the walls. Uh, later on in life, how it manifested itself is uh, not being able to tune in. It's like having 20 television stations on at the yeah. same time yeah. and not being able to tune in on any one station or getting any one thing done or accomplished. You know, I think a lot of people will relate to this in so many ways. I'm a major multitasker. We were just joking about mm -hmm. that. Did it help you in some ways once you got the ability to control it and work, work, uh, be able to use this to your advantage? Yes, it, it's a great point. It turned out to be a tremendous gift once I learned how to work with my ADD mind. For instance, I can't do any one thing at a time without my mind going in a thousand different directions. But if you do three, four, or five things at once, then you don't have all this nervous or extra energy in your mind. You're able to focus and concentrate and get even more done than just one thing at a time.